Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and today we're visiting with Dr. Jonathan Larson. He's with the University of Kentucky Extension Entomologist there. Jonathan, today we're going to talk about something that we've just recently identified here in Warren County, and that is the jumping worm. It's an invasive worm. Uh, some people uh, have, will also refer to it as the Asian jumping worm, sort of a geographic den denominator of telling you where they came from. It's important to point out that a lot of the earthworms that people kind of think of as cute and cuddly and important here in Kentucky, they are not native to here at all. We've had these European species like night crawlers and red wigglers and a few others that people are familiar with. And now that we are doing more international trade and travel from Asia and that portion of the world, we're also receiving species from there. And in this case, there are some earthworm species that have also come over either through sort of bait and trade, uh, so people using these as fishing bait, or through other methods of, of trade and travel with boats and things like that. And once it ar arrived in the kind of Wisconsin Great Lakes area, it's begun to spread from there. And it presents interesting challenges, I think, uh, sort of out in the woods, and then also kind of in the home landscape. They are very aggressive in their defensive behavior. So if you approach a jumping worm and you touch it, if you disturb it in any way, it will just like throw itself wildly in one direction, and then it just kind of hops around. I know that all worms wiggle, all worms writhe when we touch them. If you've ever baited a hook, you've seen that. But this, it is very strange. A client brought it in. So it was all in the soil. So we tried to wash him up so he could look pretty for the photo to send to you to make sure that this was a jumping worm. And he thrashed all across. And it was more snake-like than worm-like. Now, is it important for clients if they run across one to get it positively identified? We would really appreciate that. I will say that this isn't a pest that has uh, a lot of like regulatory action behind it, but we want to know where it is in the state. Thus far, we've received a few scattered reports from extension offices, so we don't have a clear picture quite yet of exactly where this worm is already located in the state. And it's very helpful for us to be able to know that so that we can make recommendations to extension professionals and to, to people trying to make decisions about maybe moving soil and other sort of goods and, and materials out of specific counties just to make sure that we're not going to help the worm to spread in the bluegrass state. If you look at these, they look slightly different, particularly around a reproductive structure called the clitellum. It is on most worms, this kind of raised, almost kind of puffy looking, it looks kind of like a Band-Aid that you would wrap around your finger. It sticks up, it's noticeable. If you look at the jumping worm, it is much more flush with the skin. It, it's a band, but it doesn't stick out in the way that other earthworm clitellums do like you would see with a night crawler. But the thing about the clitellum here is that it is starkly lighter in color than the rest of the earthworm. Thus far in Kentucky, we haven't seen quite the same level of problems that we've seen in Wisconsin and Minnesota uh, and other states up north, where this worm has gotten out into forests up there and it out reproduces the other worms, the night crawlers, the wigglers, and all of them. And it out eats all of these other worms. They get going different a different time of year. And so they kind of will go through and they'll gobble up all of the rotting material that's in the soil. Earthworms are, are generally thought of as beneficial because they eat this rotting matter, and as they go to the bathroom, they return nutrients to the soil potentially. They're aerating the soil. They're doing all kinds of beneficial things. But with these, they just go through and they strip mine the whole area. It changes the soil texture. It goes from a normal sort of uh, healthy feeling soil to, it looks like coffee grounds that are spent that you've had in the machine, and it feels really cloying and weird. It doesn't help with water. Uh, filtration. It doesn't help to support as much plant life. They've actually noticed that understories and even the pH of the soil, uh, other factors about the soil change during this earthworm invasion. We don't want that to happen here, of course. Uh, there's people that get worried about their raised beds and things like that. What would happen to that soil? They, they could potentially alter it or eat it out to a point that it's just not as helpful of a, or healthy of a soil anymore. The thing with some of these species are that they are used as fishing bait. And so that helps to get them moving around. People will toss worms when they're done. And if you inadvertently had these, these this species or the stink worm, you could be helping them to spread their cocoons, which are their egg cases. They do float in some situations. So if you're on the river and you toss it out, you could potentially help them that way. Uh, so I would say those would be the effects would be kind of 
behavior change, but no, they're not going to burn us, harm us, sting us or anything like that. But just kind of keep an eye out. And then if you do feel like you have one, we would encourage you to bring a sample in and make sure we can get a positive ID so we can track the movement. Um, we appreciate you watching the Farm and Home Show and we'll see you next time.